This is the Lion Main Nebula, or NGC 2392. It is what's known as a planetary nebula, the leftovers of a supernova where a star has run out of fuel and thrown all its outer layers out into space, leaving behind the still glowing core in the middle, which gives off high energy radiation, causing the gas around it to glow. The different colors indicate what element is present in the gas, red for hydrogen or green for oxygen, for example. Now, the Lion Main Nebula is one of the most high highly studied planetary nebula ever, with 1,007 astrophysics research papers that mention it. And yet the reason for its weird and wonderful shape is still completely unexplained. Now, planetary nebula come in all shapes and sizes, but roughly speaking, we can sort them into three main types, spherical, elliptical, and bipolar. The shape the gas makes tell you about the star that was there before, more massive stars create more chaos as they pulse off their layers, where less massive stars seem to create the more perfect circular nebula, throwing off their outer layers in one go. The really cool bipolar nebula are thought to be formed if the dying star is in a binary system with two stars orbiting each other. The gas essentially gets shot out above and below the orbits of the two stars. Looking at the Lion Main Nebula though, you can see it has this incredibly complex structure. It's what's known as a double shell nebula because you can see it's essentially got two layers to it, right? The outer shell is like a spherical planetary nebula, except it also has lots of fine detail structure in it. And then the inner shell kind of looks like a bipolar nebula, except you've got so much more structure there. You can possibly even pick out like a, a Mickey Mouse shape of like three lobes. But if you look at it more closely, you can actually see many circular structures that all seem to overlap. Not only that, to add to just the chaos that is the Lion Main Nebula, there's also X-rays coming from the center, incredibly high energy radiation that has to be produced by something incredibly high energy. There's also a jet of material being launched out from the center as well. In this image, the red colors indicate the part of the jet moving away from us and the blue, the part of the jet moving towards us. And this is actually the first ever image of where the jet actually is in NGC 2392. And it was published only very recently back in 2021. In fact, it's actually thanks to fairly recent studies that we've slowly started to, to piece together an idea of what might be going on in NGC 2392. Too. Firstly, last year, the European Space Agency's Gaia mission, which is recording the positions and distances and motions of almost a billion stars in our Milky Way, confirmed that there was a normal O-type star in the center of NGC 2392. That's one of the most massive, hottest stars you can possibly get. But that's a star that's still happily burning hydrogen fuel like a normal star does. It's not died, therefore it can't be responsible for the nebula that surrounds it. But this study in 2019 by Mazowski and collaborators actually revealed that this huge O-type star is moving towards and away from us in a really regular pattern, suggesting that something is orbiting that normal O-type star that we can't see yet. And in fact, if you model that orbit nicely, then the best thing to explain that O-type star movement is a white dwarf star that's around about 0.6 times the mass of the sun. So a white dwarf dwarf star is something that's left behind when a normal star dies. It's sort of like the inert helium core after all that hydrogen fusion has occurred. It's actually what's going to be left behind by the sun when the sun finally runs out of fuel. The core is still hot and it's essentially radiating away all its energy, causing the gas around it to glow. It would also explain the X-ray emission in the jets as well. If the white dwarf star was actually stealing matter away from the normal big O type star, the white dwarf having much more concentrated gravity would actually accelerate that material to huge speeds, causing it to glow in x-rays. And then sometimes it can even launch that material out into these huge jets that we then see. The interaction of the two orbits of these stars, plus the chaotic nature of that massive O type star because it's having material pulled off it all the time, is what we think could have then created the chaotic shape of the Lion Main Nebula. If this is the case though, that you've got an O-type star being orbited by a very compact white dwarf star, then the Lion Main Nebula as we know it might not be around 
for that much longer. Because if that white dwarf star keeps growing in mass, stealing it away from that massive O-type star, eventually it will reach a limit where its gravity will be so strong that it will be able to overcome the forces between the electrons and the protons in that white dwarf star that's actually holding it up and resisting gravity at the moment. It will overcome that and cause it to collapse down into a neutron star in a process that's known as a type 1a supernova. These are the supernova that always go off at the exact same brightness because that limit of the mass that the white dwarf can get to before gravity overcomes those forces holding up that star is always exactly the same wherever you are in the universe. So because they always go off at the same brightness, we can use them to measure distances to faraway galaxies from how bright they appear. And so people have used type 1a supernova to show how the universe is expanding. So while we're not 100% sure that there is a white dwarf star orbiting that massive O-type star that we know is in the center of the light main nebula, it's still the best hypothesis we have right now. And that means we can get excited by the idea that we might be seeing the ancestors of these type 1a supernova that we see across the universe. And if we can see the ancestor of it, then we can hopefully understand them better. And then we can get a more accurate measurement of how fast the universe is expanding. So keep an eye on the Lion May Nebula. You can actually even see it with a small telescope wherever you are in the world near the constellation of Gemini. It's just up from Orion. And catch it while you can, because in an astronomically short time frame of 100,000 years or so, the Lion May Nebula as we know it could be completely gone. It is fun to think about x-rays coming from the center of nebula when you've just had an x-ray of your teeth this morning by the dentist, right? It's like, it's exactly the same thing. <laughs> Firstly, the European Space Agency, Space Agency, every time Sean Connery, leave me alone. <laughs> because in a very astronomically short time scale, 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 <laughs> time scale, oh God. Because the cover is not the book, so open the nebula up and take a look, because under the cover you'll discover there's a white dwarf orbit in the net. <laughs> not quite as good as the lyricist of Lin-Manuel Miranda, am I? <laughs> 